like, you know, he, he starts talking about the Jews that were there with them, but he doesn't really go into that. He doesn't really, he, he just kind of diverts back to the Palestinians. But they, these guys are well aware. Everyone in the world is well aware who the true Israelites are. This Arab guy knows too. He, he, he's sitting there telling you that these guys prohibit DNA testing. So if they're all, uh, they all know about this, you know, not allowing DNA testing, that these people all come from these different European countries, they didn't stop and just like, oh, well, we, but we don't know who the true, true, the true Israelites are. They all know. But a Apparently, it seems as if everyone is just sworn to secrecy. The guy is, the Arab guy was. Shalom. Call Lamla Yahweh. By Shem Yahweh Shai. By Shem Konkadash. Our praises be to the Most High, Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work. In truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So it's very powerful to have access to this light. And one of the things that this truth does, it frees our mind from fear and gives us a sense of being at ease, not comfortable in its entirety, but it gives us an opportunity to be able to be at peace. There's several scriptures we can go to I'm not going to be able to make this long. My voice is real, real dry tonight. But uh, I want to thank the brother, by the way, that uh, donated the tea and uh, honey for me. So appreciate that. And I love honey, by the way. Anyway, I want to talk briefly about this video. And once again, the scriptures are spot on. The Many of these nations... <clears throat> They already knew who we were. Despite our heartaches and despite all of the struggles that we were going through here in America. And many of these other nations waited to begin, waited until their afflictions were increased. And then all of a sudden they wanted to jump on the so-called black bandwagon, if you will. Now we're all brothers all of a sudden. But they sit back and watch us dying from drought, thirst for knowledge, and hunger for the meat and comfort of these scriptures. And they just sat back and it was like, oh, well, it sucks to be you. It sucks to be you. So now the truth is coming out. Many people are trying to cleave to the Israelites. Now, some are Israelites, but then there's some that's trying to jump on the wagon train, if you will, the gravy train, excuse me. They're just trying to get fed or to get some relief from their burden underneath the kingdom of Edom. So they just want to get some relief from their affliction and suffering as we near closer to the end and the major judgments that the Most High have in store for this wicked place. But I want to go here. I'm not going to make this long. You know, let's go here first. <clears throat> Perfect segue. See, Psalms 79 Verse 8, or remember not against us former iniquities. Let thy tender mercies speedily 
prevent us, for we are brought very low. Every time I read this scripture, it resonates with me. We're at the bottom, looking up at the bottom of the bucket. No one respects us. Many of, <laughs> many of our own women don't even respect us. So a woman feels comfort or solace underneath a sure protective shield or protective blanket. So we were stripped of our ability to defend ourselves. The Bible says there shall be no might in thy hand. So quite naturally, many of our women gravitated towards the major power brokers, the stockholders whose face is on the money. Her mind is made to survive. But now the Lord is pushing a power shift in the earth. And many people can feel that vibration begin to tilt the scale of power. And we got to stop and think for a moment. How in the world can people that are lowly, don't print money, no military, no gold vaults, no silver reserves or oil stock, move the earth and cause a large swarm of activity and series of event-changing circumstances that's altering the course of our world. This truth is a very powerful force to be able to do that. These other nations are very, very concerned. The international bankers are losing sleep at night. See, Psalm 79, verse 9. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of thy name. And deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. So the Most High has a stake in this entire ordeal. You think he's going to allow his name to be polluted forever? Do you think the Most High is going to take a loss? Absolutely not. So... The right mindset is to fear and tremble for what's coming upon this earth. His people have been drugged through the mud, smeared under a smear campaign, demonized, accused as being the problem on the earth. The scum of the earth is that not written. We are the offscouring. Offscouring is what you get off of your muddy boots at the front door before you even come through the front door. So we've been treated as less than a doormat. So the Lord has timed this thing perfectly. There is a fierce right hand of the remnant elect men that are springing forth. And this is one of the reasons great fear is falling upon those that are laying witness to these events as they unfold. See? Wherefore should the heathen say, where is their God? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight by the revenging of the blood of thy servants which is shed. So balance the scales, Bubba Kasha, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. They make mockery of your name. They despise your holy word. They persecute your anointed. Did you not say, Most High, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, touch not my anointed? And neither do my prophets no harm. So they are ridiculing you, great power. So do you not think in your wildest imagination that the Most High is not going to visit the world 
for these offenses. And the people that are at the ham or the people ruling this world in wickedness are not going to feel the wrath of the Most High. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is their God? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight by the revenge of the blood of thy servants which is shed. So the elect is going to see the destruction upon our enemies. Let's go here real quick. The book of Sirach, chapter 25. Book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 7. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy in the tenth. I will utter with my tongue a man that have joy of his children and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. So the Lord has raised up a remnant that are being cultivated, nurtured, developed, groomed to blossom forth as the next world leaders. This has been his design the entire time, period. So this fall of Israel, the fall in the way, was really a leadership development program to be brought low in order to be lifted up and exalted for his name's sake. So this is the greatest film production known to mankind. No director can write a script this legit. Let's go here. Psalms. Psalms 79 verse 11. Let the sign of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve thou those that are appointed to die. So we are led as sheep to the slaughter. But from the mercies of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, he's going to preserve a small few for his name's sake. A large multitude following the rent the tabernacle of David. <clears throat> a little sanctuary, if you will. So this number is small relative to the population of the earth, which is about 8 billion people. So when it's talking about a small remnant or a little sanctuary, it's not talking about a couple thousand people. Okay? So it may be talking about as few million. We don't know. But there's a... There's 12,000 from each tribe, which is the governing authority and then there's a large or great multitude out of every nation. So the Lord is going to build the next kingdom from those that have been preserved from the destructions to come. Psalm 79 and 12 and render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom their reproach wherewith they have reproached thee, O Lord. So these other nations are going to get back double by which they have dished out. So we, thy people and sheep of thy pastor, will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. So a legacy is being written for the Lord's servants. All these videos, all these street teachings or camp sites, these are going to be like a panoramic view of the voices and images of the Lord's men. So this is a legacy book being written for the Lord's servants, the prophets and the large multitude following in truth and sincerity. 
So he's not going to forget the works of those that are diligent and seeking him with their whole heart. So just imagine seeing images and flashes of all of the men, the ancient men, all the work and labor they've done. If you've ever been to a, and I'm speaking through the spirit right now, but if you've ever been to a, let's say a, a couple has been married for about 75 years, you can see images of all of the experiences they had, all of the diligent labor in that relationship. So the Lord is going to get his men a great name and fame throughout the entire earth. So he's going to glamorize his witnesses, if you will. Matter of fact, I'm speaking in the spirit, but there is a scripture that I want to go to. But just imagine the glory and the greatness of the reward of the kingdom to come. So the Lord has a special plan by which he planned to demonstrate this token of a reward for good works. <clears throat> Let's go to Zephaniah 3, if I'm not mistaken. The Bible focuses on the remnant, elect, elect, elect. Many bug outs is just push, pushing Let's come together and build a nation of Israel. You must be out of your entire mind. All types of bug outs are in the nation of Israel. You got pork eaters. You have people that saying the Sabbath is on the full moon. Is when the Sabbath comes in. These people are out of their mind. So how can you build a nation with a bunch of circus characters? It does not work, does not mix. <clears throat> Zephaniah 3, verse 12. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. So these are the Lord's faithful servants. So a, a story book is being written. It's all been prescribed to play out the way it's playing out. So not only does the Most High get his glory, but his witnesses are going to be highlighted for all of the great labors and faithful works. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Let's go to verse 13. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. There is no gal in the mouth of the Lord's servants, because they're already sanctified through the blood of his son, the lamb. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. So Israel is being built up to never fall again. The Lord knows our pain and sorrow and suffering. He created us. He understands our stripes and mourning, sleepless nights of being depressed, being Full of vexation of spirit. How can the creator or father of spirits not know when our spirits are afflicted? So the Lord 
says, Fear not, my servant Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So we have a help that the other nations are not going to be able to do anything against. The Lord hath taken away thy judgment. He hath cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. So who are the people in the land today? They're dodging rockets and mortar fire. Mortars dropping all around them. Rapid machine gun fire. Improvised explosive devices. I've lived through these things. Okay? So the Bible is promising peace, rest, and no evil. So who in the world are the individuals over there claiming to be in the kingdom, claiming to be us? And saying that the Messiah came and left already and will not return anymore. They even had a character over there calling himself King David. And he 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 passed away. I can't remember his name. The uh, little hat people. Anyway. Let's go here to verse 16. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear thou not and to Zion. Let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. So the Most High is going to dwell in the midst of his new kingdom, his government. Government. Yahweh Shai is physically going to be here as the king over the entire earth. So he is eagerly awaiting to occupy his throne on the earth and to gather the remnant of his people that have diligently, diligently shown forth faithfulness through their works, <clears throat> moving through the fear of the Lord. And demonstrating the good fruits of the spirit. Not waning in the faith. Not waning in the consistency. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. Who are of thee. To whom the reproach of it was a burden. Since I laid my burdens down. Let's go here to burden. Burden. No Elder Apostle Gabar goes into this a lot. Look at that word. Bureaucratic or bureau. It goes back to burden. If I'm not mistaken. Burden. Uprising. contribution or gift that's interesting because these afflictions come with a reward the bible says there is that there is suffering we'll go ahead and get it real quick i think it's first peter four Try it this way. First Peter four. Yep. First Peter four and one. For as much then as Hamashiach have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin, that he is no longer, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. So he that have suffered in the flesh 
have ceased from sin. So this was all a part of the program, a leadership development course. Let's go here. So the elect are suffering patiently and eagerly awaiting the establishment of a righteous government, which starts with Yahushai. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Beautiful. So this is what I was getting into. Imagine being in a relationship or celebrating a, a 75th year anniversary or something. I'm just using a small example because I couldn't come up with a better one, just to be honest with you. But imagine all of the different flashes of images of all the trial and all the struggles, all the suffering. So imagine Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shine coming back as the bridegroom and he sees all of the being enslaved and being in yokes of iron and bleeding and hanging on trees. So imagine that he has a compilation of all those images. Yahawashai knows all things. So imagine that. So this relationship is built stronger through the pain and suffering and sorrow that we share with our Savior, our bridegroom, Yahawashai. And by his blood, it freed us from a death sentence of committing adultery. And that is really not complicated to understand if we're working, walking through the spirit. So imagine the bond being sealed with a stronger adhesion, adhesion contract, if you will, or covenant through our suffering together. So now we share a common bond with the greatest man that ever walked the face of the earth, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach. This thing is heavy. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. That her is the daughter of Zion. The elect is being gathered. At that time will I bring you again. Even in the time that I will gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. Beautiful. So turning back that captivity is simultaneously seeing the captivity of our enemies. So he's raising up the tabernacles of David, the thrones and dominions of David, and at the same time, flattening or leveling the tabernacles of Edom. This is a beautiful execution of righteousness and judgment in the earth. Absolutely beautiful. <clears throat> so there is no salvation for Israel without the utter destruction of Edom. And the remnant or residue of them is going to be salvaged to serve in the kingdom to come. Let's close out here. And this is a scripture that kept coming to mind when I was listening to the video of the Jake talk. When I say Jake, I'm talking about Jacob, an Israelite. Let's close out here. This is the scripture I had in mind right here while he was talking. 
and I'm going to it briefly. Revelation 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So Yahweh Shai was crossed out here. His image, a so-called black man with woolly hair, and most importantly, his word. This entire system pushes an anti Hamashiach doctrine. Man with a man, woman with a woman. Rebellious children that can have you locked up when they don't get their way. I mean, what in the hell is this? This place is upside down. Effeminate men, masculine women. It's a nightmare here. Anyway, and that great city is talking about the golden city, which is the daughter of Babylon, America. I was flying in, coming back into D.C. on Tuesday evening. And from the aerial view, it just, with all the lights on and stuff, it just looks like diamonds and pearls and rubies. It just looked like elegance. So this is Babylon on steroids. The ancient hanging gardens of Babylon. It was a paradise on earth. When you read some of the historical accounts. And it's Egypt. It's bondage. So we are in bondage. Which spiritually is sealing that relationship with our bridegroom having suffered with him so hence are going to look forward to the reward that comes with that suffering be reunited with him let's go to revelation 11 and 9 let's close out here and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. So the other nations knew who we were the whole time, but did not give us any closure. Did you know you're the Lord's people? Did you know you're not black, Afro-American, Negro? You're not Indian. You are the sons of the living power. Yeshua Allah, Yeshua Allah, Israel. You are a special people, a noble people, a regal class, a higher bloodline, and were placed on the earth to rule over all nations. Once you repent and come back, to the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So not suffer our dead bodies to be put in graves. No closure. Who are we? How did we get in this condition? How do we come out of this dark place or the sunken place? So hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakadash, Barakatam. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and the Bad Baba. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. Shalom.